Hi guys. Right. Sorry. Who's in burnout? Me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in burnout. Um, I think what tipped me over the edge was having to spend the night in hospital and um, I just haven't been able to regain my already low energy from that. So I've been in burnout mode, but then again, it's just coming up to six months since moved. Um, burnout, it's here. It's here for many reasons, a combination of reasons. And yet, some things have just begun. Now my AAT is finished, so I just have to wait for some paperwork and go buy the items that they were being idiots about. Yeah. I know, right? So, now that they, it's funny, <laughs> they, they always do an independent medical OT assessment. They didn't even like him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he was a bit of a, bit of a dick. Mm. So, that, that was made clear. Anyway, and my lawyer went for the jugular to um, the person that was challenging informal supports um, because of just the hypocrisy of things as well as um, dude, disability discrimination in the NDIS doesn't look good, mate. <laughs> so anyway, she threatened him and said, well, you know, if you don't do this, then we might have to go to court about this because this is disability discrimination. So anyway, my lawyer's, um, she's got teeth. What lawyer doesn't? But in a good way. Like, she's a um, ethical, she is intelligent, she's also disabled herself, she is a smart cookie, and she wants, she wants justice. She's a good one. So basically, um, that was really cool. So, things are pretty much sorted. My plumber, so by my provider, they've apologised for the late but they've had to get from the actual company the tap fittings. Duh. Okay. The other plumber should have picked up on that. But anyway, we won't go there. They're meant to be NDIS approved. They're not. <laughs> They're just the same as a dumb old plumber. And I shouldn't say that because I'm not, I don't mean dumb old plumber. But when you work for being a plumber for disability, you do have to have extra abilities in different appli like appliances and things that you're installing towards disability appliances as in like installs and stuff you do need to be a bit more and they don't they just want the ticket so they get more business you know so yeah mr albanese you might need to fix that shit you know because you might you might give them the stampy stamp but they have no idea that's we, we had about three plumber groups. I mean, we're still getting the same plumbers to come back and put it in, but we've had to go through the motions being sort of, look, it's no fault of their own, they're young, but we just said, maybe we should just go with the taps from the company that they recommend. And they went, yeah, we might just do that because Bunnings doesn't have anything. I'm like, yeah, no shit. It's an unusual bath, guys. It's not a normal bath. And that's why they should be NDIS like almost trained with different things to think along those lines if you get my drift it's not a normal bath so basically those taps are coming from the eastern state so that's the delay so the plums we're putting that in i think next tuesday actually i think it's next tuesday um so yeah i had to spend the night in hospital that was fun so obviously i'm allergic to tree nuts now that's great i love that for me And because, you know, the hospital's having a bit of a dummy spit, I didn't get my gastroparesis dietitian, so... But I need to speak to a dietitian ASAP because I need to work out what I need to avoid and all that because um, the doctor that I had in the ED... Um, anyway, must be hard dealing with us rare syndrome people because we're very smart um, on our syndrome and, and, and we have to know a bit more than the average bear and um he said a few stupid things and because i was half asleep i was very blunt autistically blunt and i said a few factual things and he was shaking 
<laughs> I didn't mean to, but say dumb shit, I'm going to like correct it. Just saying. Don't say dumb shit around me because I know my science. I know myself. So anyway, he, um, yeah, but he was fine after that. <laughs> he was fine after that. Um, but yeah, I've recovered from that, caught up on sleep. More so, I should say, so caught up on sleep. But I didn't get quality sleep. It's not like you get quality sleep in hospital. But that was not fun. Um, and not fun for my neighbours as well because they were worried. But um, all is good. It was not a severe reaction. Even though, look, anaphylaxis is a severe reaction. You should always go to hospital, especially if you're struggling to breathe. But my stats were good for oxygen. I was hyperventilating. <laughs> not good. But you know what I mean. I was able to get oxygen in. I was able to breathe way enough to be safe, but you've got to be monitored for a certain amount of hours. But anyway, I'm fine. It's just disappointing to me that one of my things to keep my weight on was Nutella, a spoon of Nutella regularly in the day, which things like that had been discussed with my gastroparesis dietitian, so now I have to change. Because, of course, I can't change to peanut butter. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. And I can't do the Biscoff because it's got wheat in it. I'm allergic to that. I have a different reaction, but I'm allergic to that. So it's like, <laughs> we will find something though. Um, so what I've been having is I've gone back to the eggs. Yes, eating lots of eggs. So just add extra protein in. Um, it's very easy to digest. Yeah, so that's sort of the change to that. But basically I'm in burnout. And I'm really sad about that because the channel is exciting me just before I crashed, but I'm crashed. I'm in an autism crash in here, so my creativity's on pause. It's almost like the creativity button, it's been like, me, pause. Um, and then my health is kicking my butt because anything, like, look, my, look, look at my immune system, it's just had a big shock. Um, anaphylaxis is always a big shock to the system, so I'm feeling it, I'm feeling tired. My heart already makes me tired, so, um, it's just a nightmare. And then I've got lots of meetings still because I've still got things going on with my disability lawyer, still working through a lot of things with, with my legal team. So I'm busy. And, but, but I did, like, I had a project given by my lawyer and I did it. I actually got that complete. So I was proud, look, with a lot of help from Sir. I'm proud of myself though. I did it. Um, it come out, it turned out really well and I'm really happy with it and some meetings have already been had and I'm really happy with them and but time time is just going to be the nightmare of this next last little saga of my health journey or I should say unhealthy journey I'm not just talking about my health I'm talking like you know having a genetic, genetic syndrome that's trying to kill me at the moment middle age um more than that, extra to that, I should say, um, I'm fighting systems, basically. Um, so it's not fun, but it has to be done because I have to set the precedence for my future family because this is a genetic syndrome, 50% chance my children can have it. And even if they don't, there's still 10% chance of my grandchildren having it. It'll still be going down the line of the family no matter what, I've chosen for myself, it came to me and it'll go to someone else. So it's how it goes and I have to set the, the I have to pave the way in Perth for this reason. So there's a lot of pressure on me, but I'm used to that. So I just keep fighting all these systems, but I keep winning. So the, the AAT was a win. Um, you know, they tried every little trick under the book. It's dirty, it's, it's a dirty trick. Guys, it's a dirty system. I'm sorry. Fix the fucking system. You're actually being dirty on the wrong people. Um, and sadly, it's always harder when you're an adult, guys, because they don't see potential of you being a slave. You know. So, yeah. 
But anyway, everyone deserves the right to live and everyone deserves the right to quality of life. This is fucking Australia, okay? But anyway, there is people that milk the system though, so I do get the hesitancy. I do understand having to go through the process. I don't mind that. I don't mind the checks and stuff to make sure that everything's legit. Don't mind. But sadly, it does hurt. Majority bad, majority of good people, not the bad people. Um, so that's the only downside to that is you're not really capturing the baddies as easy in that system but so that's done yay so um i do recommend even though um you have to go through the stress and you have to go through a lot of work paperwork um but i do recommend if they're not understanding i have a breast syndrome okay everything i touch that's to do with disability and medical that's why i now have a disability lawyer is complex because they don't understand 22Q, but they pretend to. It's an ego problem, okay? Um, or they'll say, well, what's that? And you say to George, and they say, oh, that. But the modern research is very different to the old research. The old research is just, it still says what it needs to say. It's not like it's different, different, but yeah, there wasn't as much that they used to worry about back then. Um, but now there's more that they worry about because duh, things are becoming more and more obvious. But basically, when you're late diagnosed, <laughs> um, the egos get a bit injured. So it's, yeah, it's very difficult dealing with people with big egos, isn't it? I mean, you, you you know what it's like, everyone. Everyone's had a job where you've had a boss with a big ego and you're just like, oh, my God, this person just needs to be worshipped. And um, you just need to tell them that, yes, you're right on every. I know, everything you say is so right and you're so cool. It's just stupid, right? You know, you just got to go through that crap. But basically, yeah. Um, one last battle, one last battle, um, but this one's the good one because I feel like this one is cathartic because it's been, um, a long journey. Sorry, two seconds. <sighs> Fresh mind. Anyway, it's a tablet to get the fluid out of your system. It's been difficult because I had a belly problem needed to take some laxatives which I'm very cautious of with my heart now but basically I had to take some recently like the last not not yesterday today but three days four days before that so it kind of counteracts my frucemide so my frucemide stopped working so that's why I'm a bit like you know fluidy so now they're working so when they start working again it's like it's a river, it's a, it's a river. Anyway, so I'm in burnout. Um, like I said, I've got one fight to fight, but it's so cathartic, guys. I can't wait to get through it, to share my experience, to hopefully be an inspiration, to hopefully make you fight harder. I, I really, I really do hope I can share it too because quite often in life some battles are just kept in secret and it's really difficult because I don't think that's fair and I don't think that's, you know, something that gives me what I really want out of resolution for my life is, is justice. I'm an autistic that matters to me the most um, but I guess at the end of the day what matters to me more is just making sure that I'm setting my family up I've got two sons um, I heard from one of them recently which was absolutely lovely and um, two grandsons right so I've got responsibilities and I take that seriously I take being a mother seriously. 
I take being a grandmother seriously and my goal is to leave behind some legacy and that's what I think most parents want for their kids. Um, so mama bear's fighting hard because there's not much that can help me um, being 50 and, and, and broken with 22Q. 22Q is, um, for me, everyone has it different, but I don't have a good, it's kicking my butt basically. And it always has, to be honest. Um, so yeah, and it's just so stressful what I'm going through right now. And it's even more stressful, stressful not being able to share, not being able to just chit chat about my life and be honest. Um, it's something that really pisses an autistic off, is not being able to be honest and not just say like, hey, this is what I'm going through and it really sucks, man. Um, but you know, it, like I said, it doesn't matter. My goal is not only to be the person for 22Q because I'm not seeing many other channels. I know there is a few, but I want to be the one that people come to because I feel like I'm more factual and I feel like I've got more to give being that I'm 50. I've done every phase of it. So, and... Also, this is my living journal, so I don't know what family members in my future family will have this. I don't know what family currently will be affected by this in the middle age like I was, so I just don't know. I have to pave a big way and um, that's my mission. That's my mission. That's, that's what I strive for. And... Um, that's my biggest focus is family first. Um, and then, like I said, this channel is so important for disability in general. The disability discrimination is disgusting out there, guys, isn't it? It's disgusting. It's even worse in the medical sector. It's, it's bad. Um, so, I want to be here for those people because I'm those people. <laughs> I am those people um, and yeah so I like to share my journey because I know that someone's going to get something out of it because you might be just a few steps behind and sometimes some people need to see what steps ahead is for them as well so but I have to say if I was to give the NGIS a rating For stress, minus a thousand, but for, I guess at the end of the day, if you get the ethical people around you that you have to deal with daily, you're fine. Um, and with 22Q, my package is decent, but it's probably much higher rating. And I know that I'm blessed even though I was part of the Royal Disability Commission as well. Um, and I know that like my lawyer said, I've already made changes. I'm already I'm already making a difference. And um but it just sucks because my generation shouldn't have had to go through what we went through. And when you look at the stats of autistics now and what they struggle to achieve, and I look at my past and the pressure I put on myself, let alone what pressure was put on by my family because my parents don't accept, have never accepted who I am. They don't even know me because they never accepted me enough to ever let me let my guard down. They don't know me. And it's really tough because autistics, if you look at the employment stats, if you look at the finishing their higher education stats or even their, their high school education stats, it's disgusting, Australia. It's gross. 
And um, I was one of those stats. And I beat those odds because of my hard work. My hard work. That wasn't given to me. It wasn't offered to me. It wasn't made easy for me. Um, you know, I'd put my two little babies to bed at night and sit up all night studying because I have dyslexia. So what takes someone an hour can take me three. So I've done everything harder with no accommodations, with no recognition of even, everyone knew something was wrong with me, but there was no word for it. We didn't call it autism. And online it's not represented sometimes well because a lot of IDDs, intellectual developmental delayed people, are being described as autistic more than their IDD. And so the perception of autism is skewed and it frustrates me. It frustrates me that because I have, not in a way that I call ideal, but it does prove that if you support your autistic person, they can reach high. But just because I was thrown out into the wilderness to survive on my own from um, pretty much 18, um, I had to do things myself. There wasn't an option for assistance. And that's the only reason why I look so capable, but I'm actually not capable of a lot of things. Um, so you get picked on harder. The, the better you do, isn't that nice? The harder you worked and the harder you did it compared to a lot that, you know, their parents muddy coddled them and, you know, so they don't have to step out of their comfort zone. They don't get pushed in that way. They've never lived alone. They've never, that's crippling. Just like if I did that to my neurotypical, well, I don't have neurotypical children. I have neurodiverse children, but if I did that to neurotypical children, that's abuse. If I did that to my neurodivergent children, that's abuse. Um, they have to fly. Now look, you make sure that they're ready. You make sure that they've got a career, and I think that's the most important thing, is that they've got a career that they can support themselves. Then it's basically, a, I used to leave it to being, if you're emotionally ready to leave, go. It's your choice. Um, it all just depends, and also it depends on things like, you know, when, when kids live, adult children live with their parents, if they don't stick to house rules, that can become a problem too, but you know what I mean. Um, Kids shouldn't be pushed out at 18. Um, I think they need time to learn to be an adult for a few years or more before they can do that. Plus career, like I said, you've got to be able to support yourself. But basically, um, I didn't have that. And so I get punished for coping well. And I just think that's bullshit. And that's why I didn't rush my kids out of home at 18 because there's just things they need to learn doesn't happen instantly but then they should they should fly like because it's just unhealthy to have adult children at home for too too long you know um, unless there's like really high needs care that's needed then that's different if, if your child or that happens later in life and they get extremely high care whatever you, you do what you do I respect parents out there that are having to do that I'd do the same but basically burnout is real like just the senses of like we popped out to Kmart last night because Matt he got so sick of hearing me say I can't deal with my clothes I don't know what to put on I don't know how to coordinate it I don't know where everything is it's all very confusing. I've been like this since we've moved here, right? Because what I've got over there is a very difficult station. It's a brilliant station. It's a wonderful, massive closet. Not complaining about that. But Sir's, like Junior, Sir Junior the cat, you know, Willow, he's got his cat tree near it. Sir's got his table near it. It's always blocked. Okay? And it's like, excuse me, everybody. That's my corner. <laughs> So I've reclaimed my corner, but anyway, we put everything on the bed last night. We went through 
everything. I had to try on all these different things and then it was just like, okay, that doesn't fit anymore. And some of the stuff was when I was, oh, before I was even diagnosed with gastroparesis and I couldn't get my weight, keep my weight on, get my weight on. Um, what did I get down to? 43 kilos, guys. So naturally, I'm not going to fit into those clothes again. So they got chucked. Um, because there's no way I'm allowing myself to end up with that, which is great with, when you have gastroparesis, at least you're monitored. So that takes that pressure off. It just happens naturally. So you can, you know where you're always sitting. Um, and you can compensate with certain things. They help you with that. Um, I've got those meal replacement drink shakes. Awesome. They've got all the nutrients. And if I haven't had enough, I drink those as well. And also they process very well. So when you think of, oh my gosh, I've got nothing e in the house, easy to process. You can even have two of them. Having two of them is probably like the same as having a meal, like a, like a big, big meal, like a dinner. But anyway, so I'll have a couple of those or one of those, depending on what the date is, right? But then I had stuff that was just old. It was like, that's discolored. That's discolored. That looks really old. Oh, I don't like that anymore. So got rid of those things. Then I realized, oh my gosh, I need underwear of every kind. The socks, the knickers, the, what's the need? Oh, and even my bike shorts, because I wear a lot of, a lot of the times around the house, those cotton bike shorts. Love them, love them. Um, I wear them with a you know, baggy t-shirt, very comfortable, and summer's coming up. So that leggings, I had to get three-quarter leggings for summer, because I was like, I didn't even have any three-quarter leggings at the moment. What, how did that happen? My three-quarter leggings is like uniform to me. And I was like, how'd that happen? Anyway, but it happened. So I was like, okay, six bucks, sure. Going in the basket. I think it was eight. It's gone up. It's inflation. Terrible. Two dollars. So I paid eight dollars for my leggings. Anyway, the three quarters. Great for summer. I got lots of shoes. Don't worry about that. But anyway, we put everything in categories. We put the winter stuff a little bit to the back. Brought the summer stuff a bit forward. The only thing I'm missing is white shorts for going to the beach in. It's just once again an autism thing you know we do these repetitive things I could go out without these shorts however I've never not had I've got like those knitted throwovers white long sleeve one and a white like just a tie up one at the top here they're beautiful but sometimes you just want to wear some shorts that even if you end up getting wet in there's really thin they just dry out or they're netted and they just dry out they're white so I was like, chucked my old ones out that I've had for like 20 years. <laughs> and thought, no, no, I can't do without them. It's a uniform thing. Anyway, still waiting for my, oh, I need to make sure there's a coat hanger ready for my um, Star Trek t-shirt. Oh, I can't wait. Star Trek. Super cool. On the back, it's got all the spaceships and all the information about anyway. Not everyone's into Star Trek, but let me know if you are, because I'd like to like chat about it, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna get them from City Beach. They do them good. They have them in all different styles, all different fabrics. So anything that dries quickly, that's what I'm going for. So I'll be getting a pair of them. I've already done my thongs early for summer. Mm, very well organized. Um, and this summer, I think I'm just going to collect some surf shirts because t-shirts from Kmart and that, it's like, no, I'm not doing them anymore. I get my basics from there, like my leggings and I got some singlet tops, which normally I wear under things. I get my basics from there, but I just don't get clothes from there, if that makes sense. Um, it's just, they don't last and I just get really annoyed. So, because I get attached to things. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll definitely get those shorts from the city beach and they'll last me another 20 years. 
Now I could get a short sleeve rashi because I've only got a long sleeve one. But I'm going to deal with the long sleeve one for now. It just zips up the middle. They're the best ones, the zip up the middle ones. Mm, definitely. So that was really like we felt accomplished. We felt so accomplished. It was cool. Um, so we did that. And what did we also end up? I got my Christmas headband for Vlogmas. I'm very ready for Vlogmas. Getting ready for Halloween. We haven't finished like that. It's not the finished decorations. Don't worry, you'll see it. The lollies I'm not putting in the container because Sir's is going to eat them. He's naughty, okay? He can't help himself. So I'm not putting them out of their bags because then he can sneak one, you see. And if I say, did you have one? He'll say, no, but he would have. And I won't, I'm not going to count them. I've got to go through one, two, they come in packs of 12. I've got 12 Mars bars, 12 Snickers, and lots of Star Burst. I like all of them too. Ex oh, I'm not having the Snickers. Oh, they've got nuts in it. Mars? No, they don't have oh, caramel. At least I got that. Jeez. Well, he can have the Snickers, and I can have the Mars bars. <laughs> Starburst share. But the Starbursts are tricky. Does anyone else try and look at the colour? What colour is that one? What colour is that one? I only like the red ones. Anyway, it's a bit like the jelly beans in the car. I always like dig through. It's like a maze. It's a bit like a, um, sorry, allergy season. It's a bit like those fidgets, right? I gotta get that red jelly bean from the bottom, worm him around, up to the little opening, and out in my mouth. And so it's like, don't eat all the red ones. I was like, well then get me a pack that has, there's packs now of all the red ones, right? I said, well get me a pack of the red ones. And then I'll never touch your jelly beans, or I'll have my own jelly beans. But no. So it's like, well I'm going to eat the red ones. He eats the black ones. They are so aniseed. Ugh. <laughs> Nightmares of that. Because of the constipation thing. Yeah, my mum used to give me licorice. It's not her fault. She's just trying to help. But I'm just saying licorice. The smell of it, the taste of it. I, I tolerate it. I like it. I like it. Anyway. Um, so, after Halloween, it's bloody well Christmas. I'm not ready for that. I'm focusing on getting, now we've got a latch, uh, we've got a person coming in to put a latch on the back sliding door. Yay, because now Sir William cannot go and just walk out. I cannot afford that to happen. Um, there's cracks in the balcony. And also when I get my new floof, which um, I will be saving for a new floof like him, because he needs a friend and I need a friend. I need as many animals as possible for my mental sanity. <laughs> um, I know that a baby floof, oh, they're, they're naughty. Naughty. Um, so, yeah, I, I just need to be ready for things like that. Um, but, yeah. So, what else did we achieve at Kmart? Kmart's starting to get really ready for Christmas, if you want to know. So, if you... Want to get your Christmas stuff started? Go down there. Great Christmas t-shirts, pajamas, headbands, um, all sorts of stuff. They've definitely got their swimwear, and um, swimwear is not that big though. And they don't have a lot of summer clothes yet, so I wouldn't go crazy about that. But nip, but I'd get in there for basics: the t-shirts, the singlet tops. They're going fast. Particularly if you're in a size range that's difficult to get, jump in now. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't what I'd call overwhelming in the clothing department. But I don't shop at Kmart for clothing because Kmart doesn't fit me. Their sixes don't fit me. They look stupid. I look like I'm wearing my mum's clothes. And I'm an adult. So it just looks wrong on me. It just looks like it's not meant to be. Um... So I can't wear that stuff. I have to wear petites. 
So I have to shop at Ali and Valley Girl and Shein and um, Tempt is another good one. So I have to shop at those places to actually look like a lady. <laughs> and not just, yeah, look like a teenager because those style clothings are in my size. But anyway, I'm looking forward to going to City Beach at some point. I don't know when that is. It depends when the energy level comes. So I spent the day yesterday frozen, really. Um, I was so tired. I woke up. I could barely like lift my arm off the bed. I just couldn't make a video. I was absolutely... I'd slept well. Every night I've been sleeping well. But I'm tired. I'm tired. This lack of oxygen is really getting to me. And the health department really needs to get their shit together because I need daily supplementary oxygen, not just for seizures now, um, because it's just, it's not good. So I'm exhausted. Um, I also need a better cardiologist that wants to actually work on giving me back some energy and trying more on um, medications and more things to help me with that, you know, like it's frustrating. I know that things can be done better because I'm so tired, so tired compared to before. And today's pancake day. So I could be just literally just up the road, a tumdrum, having pancakes. Pancakes every Wednesday. My friends are there, and I'm here. I want to go, but it's really difficult. But maybe one day. <laughs> but I've got my carer coming at one, so I'm sure we'll do some projects together and get some stuff done. I don't know what that is, though. Because we've already done a big project like the clothes. Um, she probably would have helped me with that actually. Um, but anyway. Sarah's got some more sewing to do. Because one, two, three. Three pants need to be done. Because they're ones from when I was not fluoretentive retentive in the belly. So they fit me, but they hurt after about an hour. And I want to have things that are literally, gosh, guys, I'm not exaggerating. I need things like literally baggy, right? Literally just almost like falling off your body. It's stupid, I know, but it's a sensory thing. So we're going to do those elastics. Well, he will when he wants to. So that's his choice, isn't it? I can't make him. That's slavery. But basically I need those doing. And then that is it. My wardrobe is complete. Well, not really because I don't know. Like my winter pajamas, which is fine because it's now summer. I've got months to worry about it. Why do I need winter pyjamas? However, the Udi, I've got two. I could theoretically survive just underwear and the Udi. They are so warm, guys. You don't need anything. Socks. Socks. But I'm just saying, they're warm. They're warm. But for me, they're very oversized. I'm just so petite. I hate being petite. It's annoying. It's really annoying. <laughs> but basically, I have to really look hard next year. Hello. Hello. Um, I have to look really, really hard for winter pyjamas. So that will be my goal. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like, we don't really have any goals except for we're doing the balcony. But there's a few things that we have to like talk to, because being an apartment building, we've got to go through strata, 
we've got to go through our provider and of course then that has to go to the owner so all, there's all these things that have to be done before we can get started but we've already gone to a place and sussed out some water features oh, there's some nice ones we found this place that has tiki bar stuff everywhere i've already bought a few things i've already bought a few things um it's now the beach house i know right super cool um because you can literally see the beach from where we are so like in front of my door thing that helps me get in the door my door recognition thing um i basically have like this sign saying the beach house and then i have these wooden little flowers you know like the um frangipani gorgeous and out the back i have this beautiful it's 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 just actually concrete but it looks like a wood log and it has these beautiful looks like the, the glass has been molded in to fit into them little candle holders and it looks beautiful on the table so i've started with a few little things but i i haven't got into the big stuff but watch this space because the front's complete so next time maybe sir can show you that in some nice b-roll but basically the backyard um probably going to take the swing down because the swing is being put up inside at some point soon um that's the other thing they have to come and, and um it's about, once again, they've got to speak to the builder. They've got to work out where, I guess, beams are. What it, I don't know. They've got to work out how and where they can hang this. I know where, but basically um, they've got to work out where they're going to hang it because it's all to do with structure. So the builder has to be involved in that. And so that will be done, the door latch. And, yeah, the... Um, I don't know what they are that close off the balcony, these shutter things. I, I don't know what they're called. I think they're like a fly screen, but you can't see anything. I don't know. But super cool. Super cool. Um, very cheap too. So means we can have a barbecue in privacy. We don't have to go to the park. If we don't want to, we can have a barbecue at home. Who doesn't want to do that? People always want to have their own private barbecue. And then I've got my little paddle pool, which I'll be sitting in when I'm not at the beach on hot days, chilling, absolutely chilling, drinking my favorite frizzy drink, snacks, <sighs> sniffing that beautiful, fresh summer air. Hmm. So yeah, that'll happen. Um, so basically, that's about it. I'm just Yes, Jazzy. Stop picking up Dad's whistle. It's annoying. Just pick up the nice words like hello. It's not the F word. She's picked up the F word. I think it does sound like it, guys. It just does. And it's like, that's me. That's me. So there's nothing else to report, really. So it's just gone to drop four big bags. Four massive garbage bags, black garbage bags of my clothes. Hmm. So it's, that's a lot. Hello. That's a lot. Sorry. Anyway, that's what they're copying. Stop. She's copying that whistle. No, stop it. Hate it. And if she picks it up. Hi, Fluffy. So, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry for the, the not the high vibe content that you normally get from me but you know me i will come back alive before you know it but i am in a crash i've had a medical my body went into anaphylaxis shock okay it's been a week and i don't even know what day it was but who cares i'm alive i'm here but i'm just absolutely zapped but i enjoyed yesterday because i got to just get into a hyper focus and be there and I enjoyed it so I recommend you do that if you're in burnout to just get some energy back again look after yourself um, and get others to support you if you have projects like what I did with the cupboard so helping me get someone to help you because um, look at the stats of how many of us dis uh, autistics who are physically disabled hi 
So don't be afraid to ask for help. So do that if you need to. I feel so good about it. That's mentally refreshing. I wish it would give me energy, but it's mentally refreshing. So I'm glad it's done. I've also ordered more resin. I actually did that. I think I might have told you that, but I don't know. But it just means that I can get, and I got my box for my portfolio because what I did was, because of that Shein order, it filled up too much of my boxes and I was squashing my molds and then I was like, what am I doing? Then when I put the resin in the mold, they'll be it'll be squashed. So I've put in my four gray boxes is all the molds and now I've got this pink box, which is my portfolio. So I'm getting back into my portfolio. So if I do anything and I'm in a good space, I will record my artwork, me doing it basically. So you can check that out. I do resin art if you don't know me. So anyway, thanks guys for listening. And I'm so sorry I'm in burnout, but look it up. Autistic burnout is real. People burnout that's real take care and i'll see you in the next video um probably be a ball because that's kind of i gotta build my way back up now because if i go too hard i'll crash again so thank you so much for sticking by and always being patient with me because i really need that catch you later bye